and welcome to this new very quick video. Today I just want to show you what my favorite speakers of 2017 are and here you can already see them. Although in each class I have several ones because there's not always one best one. But let me just quickly do this. Before I start I want to wish you a happy new year. To all of you who are watching here, again I also did a Christmas video where I said Merry Christmas so now it's New Year so I wish you a lot of success in the new year. Uh, I don't know, great new speakers, um, new things um, and a lot of again success and happiness. Um, but now I will get into my favorite speakers of this year here. Uh, it has been a great year for speakers uh, and also for my channel when we take a look at my videos about one year ago in 2016 and the beginning of 2017 you could see that my channel still was quite at the start. I didn't have uh, great mics. Uh, it was everything, I don't know, just didn't work properly. I edited on my phone. I didn't have a laptop and everything to edit on. I edited on iMovie. So it was a pretty difficult situation for me to do, but I, uh, I don't know, I kept doing it uh, despite all of some haters here. Uh, and now we are here one year later and I think uh, that I can be quite proud of myself because I almost reached 10,000 subscribers now. Of course, big thank you to all of you who have supported me in this year. Uh, I'm very thankful and grateful for that um, as it's working out pretty nicely. My next goal is about 10,000 subscribers, which isn't even that far away. Then we are going to see uh, how everything will continue. Um, but uh, don't lose or don't worry or anything. Uh, I will continue doing YouTube in the next year for sure uh, because it's just so much fun uh, and I do not see my, I don't know, passion for speakers ending anytime soon. So yeah, now just let me get started here. First, let's start with a small class of speakers. And here I have selected two. First, the BNO P2, which goes for about 160 to 180 euros. It has been released, I think, quite in the beginning of the year by BNO. Uh, and it's a pretty nice pocketable speaker, although quite expensive. But in my opinion, it's also the best sounding small speaker. Some months later, Bose came up with a Soundlink Micro, which is the one I even use more than the P2 here, um, just because it's more rugged. Uh, it's also slightly cheaper at $110. Uh, it's not as loud and in my opinion also doesn't sound as good, but it definitely has a bit more uh, real bass kick. I don't know what both apply to this, but it definitely also sounds more natural than the P2. Although if you want the best sound in a very, very small package, the P2 is the one to go for you as it just sounds the biggest from all of the pocketable speakers. While the Bose probably is the perfect outdoor companion, it has better battery life. Um, maybe sometimes it sounds a bit more full budded, a bit more realistic and it's of course way more rugged as it's waterproof, it's made from rubber instead of metal and uh, plastic like the P2. So it's definitely a great speaker to take out. I always have it under the shower as it's waterproof while I'm rather using the P2 if I just want a small and very loud speaker on the go in my pocket. Uh, so those are my favorite speakers here. Next let's move on to the medium sized speakers. And there really hasn't been that much this year. Maybe the Bose Revolve, which is uh, again the successor to the Bose Soundlink Mini 2, which has been very successful and still is loved by so many people. I don't get why, there's so much better stuff out there. But in the ending of the year, there has really been some great stuff in this class. So there has been the FIFA Reykjavik, which has been very anticipated, although quite a letdown. Uh, it's missing some of the real bass, although some people, including me, still have some, uh, I don't know, have, have some uh, faith in the FIFA, as it sometimes sounds really, really nice. It has an impressive amount of resolution, uh, very nice detailed travel and mids, uh, so that's really incredible. It's just missing a little bit of the bass, although that's okay for some people. And then there's the Denon Envia, the successor to the Denon Envia Mini, together with, I think, two other speakers, the Envia Mini and the Envia Pocket, I think. Um, but those don't sound that great and aren't anything revolutionary in this class, while the big Denon Envia, which we have here, really blows away any other speaker in this class, except for the DOS style SD806, which I will focus in a minute on, or which I will focus on in a minute. Uh, it sounds really great, it blows away the JBL Charge 3, it has impressive stereo imaging, nice mids, nice treble and also an impressive amount of bass even in high volumes. It has loudness compensation for low volumes, so you get uh, nice bass boost for low volumes. 
on max volume it's about as loud as the JBL Charge 3 while still sounding cleaner with less intermodulation. It goes for about $200 and it really has everything you want. It's also waterproof, pretty rugged, not too big. Uh, so if you have the money, this is definitely the one for you. Sadly, it's not sold in the US. I really don't get why uh, it would sell like crazy there. Uh, many JBL fanboys live in the US, so why not show them that there's better stuff out there uh, like the Denon. Uh, some people in the US might manage to get one, maybe some importing or something. It's really sad that they don't release it there and just in Europe and I think in uh, Asian ma uh, markets. Um, so yeah, it's pretty sad. Maybe in 2018 we will see them releasing some stuff in the US, which would be really great as they did a great job on the Denon and Vaya as it's definitely my favorite in this class together with another speaker. And the second speaker, which is my favorite in this class, is the Dostal SD806. As you can see, it's the small gold one here. So far, I haven't done many or any videos on it, as I just didn't have the time, but this will definitely change in 2018, as it's an impressive speaker. It really is the only one which can keep up sound-wise with a Denon. It sounds just as hi-fi, and sometimes I and many other people still prefer it over the Denon. It has a slightly more realistic, natural sound character with deeper bass kick. On high volumes, uh, the Denon will of course win as it's just newer, it has bigger drivers built in, it's louder on max volume and also sounds less forced. But up to 70% volume, the Dostal can really keep up. Sometimes I just listen to them for one hour, switching with uh, each track. Then I listen to the Den, I think, oh, this is the one. Sounds so big, so nice. Then I switch to the Dostal and then I'm fascinated by the bass kick out of this little package again. Uh, and I just love it as well. So I really cannot decide between those two. Maybe you can tell me your opinion in the comments. I will also do separate comparisons for the Den and the Dostal as those, in my opinion, really are the only very interesting speakers in this class at the moment, uh, as both really sound uh, equally good. They are head to head. Sometimes I prefer the Denon, sometimes it simply sounds, uh, I don't know, uh, just better, just the sound image, the sound signal just is better on the Denon. And then when I switch to another track, I probably or suddenly prefer the DOS style because it has more bass kick and just, I don't know, gives me a bit more drive of the track and just lets me feel the track better. Which is weird uh, because the Dostel of course is so much less expensive. It's about three years older and only goes for 50 euros. Although it's really really hard to find and not everyone can get it. So it's not really, I don't know, a real speaker as it's just, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's a speaker of course. But you cannot really buy it so it's not for the mass market. Uh, so the Denon would probably win here as almost everyone can buy it except for the entire US market. Uh, but with the Dostel pretty much no one can get it. Um, as many units are broken, so you will have to buy another one um, and many cannot get it because they are out of stock everywhere. But if you can find one, it's definitely one of the best in this class here. So definitely stay excited for the comparisons between the DOS style and many other speakers. As again, I think it's totally great sounding in this class. It can really keep up with the best of the best in this class, which is the Den and Vaya here. Sometimes it even will surpass the Den and Vaya with, I don't know, some tracks here. Um, so I will definitely um, demonstrate this and show this in a separate sound comparison. Uh, so this is going to be very exciting. Next, let's focus on the slightly bigger class of speakers, which is the size of the JBL Extreme, the Dock and Define, or the mini rig setup which I have here. Still, uh, so far you haven't seen anything of the mini rigs, but again, there will be many videos following of them soon as they are an impressive setup. I'm really glad that I got them for Christmas, still before New Year's, as they are definitely uh, one of the best speaker setups in this year here. And together with the Audio Pro T5, which you can see here, both of them are really great sounding. I even like them more than the FIFA Helsinki. If those wouldn't exist, the FIFA Helsinki would probably be the choice here for this class as the FIFA Helsinki is incredibly good sounding for its size and it really, in my opinion, is the best in its class. But now that there's the Audio Pro T5, which doesn't only sound better with many tracks, but also is less expensive than the FIFA and the Mini Wigs, which have just more kick, they are louder, uh, they have more stereo than the FIFA, I would definitely pick those two over the FIFA Helsinki if I had the choice. So yeah, we have the Audio Pro T5 or C5 here, depends on which one you get. The C5 is equipped with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, while the T5 um, only is equipped with Bluetooth for connectivity. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much the only difference, uh, while they sound totally equal and they sound really great. They have a natural hi-fi sound tuning. Uh, they sound basically like a FIFA Helsinki with very slightly less resolution, but quite a bit more bass kick, especially in high volumes. So that's why I like them so much. 
And then there is also, of course, the mini rig setup. One mini rig alone maybe isn't the best in the, I don't know, medium sized speaker class. So Denon and Vaya or Dostal SD806 will definitely sound better than one mini rig. But if you pair two of them together with one subwoofer and create some kind of 2.1 setup, they definitely blow away anything. Only the best of the best can keep up with them. So for example, the FIFA Helsinki might still be comparable, although not as loud. And then there's of course um, the Audio Pro T5, which can keep up with the mini rig sound wise. But otherwise, there's not much more JBL Extreme uh, or any other speaker of this uh, of those kind of famous brands will have no chance against the mini rigs. And I will definitely do much more on the mini rigs soon, as it's just impressive. It's such a small company; they are handmade in the UK, and as one setup, they pretty much uh, sound uh, better than anything else. And again, there are just a few speakers which can keep up with this. So again, stay excited for those comparisons here. The mini rigs again are one of the most impressive speakers in this class here, and I will focus on them in uh, a lot of other separate videos and comparisons. So as you could just hear, we have received some guests for New Year's, so I have to hurry up a little bit, but there is not much more to say. We will move on to the next class, which is, uh, I don't know, we call them the big size speakers, so pretty much the biggest portable speakers you can find, unless you are looking for something like a Soundbox 2 or Teufel Rockstar, which of course are exceptions. And this would be the JBL Boombox in my case, I know some will hate me for this because it really wasn't a well-received uh, speaker by most people. Some expected a real hi-fi speaker out of this or just expected more loudness. Um, but for me it's actually not that bad, it's a nice overall package. Uh, the only critic point in my opinion would probably be uh, the treble, which is a bit too harsh because there are two modes, the outdoor mode and the indoor mode. And the outdoor mode, the treble boost can be helpful, so you can hear it better outside, especially on higher volumes. But I don't quite get why there's a treble boost implemented into the indoor mode, because indoors you don't need a lot of treble, you just need treble resolution. Because of course indoors it's uh, mostly quiet and you don't need to hear the treble better uh, when it's pushed, you just uh, no, you just need travel resolution, you don't need a travel boost for indoors. So I'm quite wondering why there's a travel boost for indoor and outdoor, uh, which is a bit weird. And also the price is a little bit steep at $500. Uh, there are many other speakers like the Teufel Boomster 2.0, which can keep up with a JBL Boombox while being less expensive. Also the Hammond Garden Go Play sounds just as good and is also less expensive. Um, so maybe it's a little bit too uh, pricey, but sound-wise and feature-wise, it's definitely one of the best. Sound-wise, it definitely impressed me for modern music, for jazz music or acoustic stuff, you can totally forget it. So if you're a hi-fi lover or something, um, yeah, you should not buy the speaker, but I don't think that any hi-fi guy would take a look at a JBL boombox. Um, but for modern music, it's pretty nice, as long as you can live with a treble boost. Uh, the bass is uh, really, really great. This is what really impressed me, sometimes on normal volumes, uh, with the bass kicks, it can even keep up with the Phantom. Uh, the Phantom, of course, always sounds 100% accurate, while the JBL Boombox has a bass boost, but this sometimes just leads to a more dynamic sounding uh, track or a dynamic sounding sound from the JBL Boombox compared to the DVL. Of course, the DVL is the superior speaker by quite a bit, but with, I don't know, certain tracks, uh, some modern stuff, maybe some Dua Lipa or something, I sometimes uh, like the JBL more in very few cases, just because the bass is so nicely kicking and so nicely powerful. Even on high volumes, it keeps a fair amount of bass. And on high volumes, it's just slightly softer than the Iowa. Maybe they have, uh, could have pushed it even farther so that it's a bit more louder or a bit louder than the Iowa Exos 9. But so far, um, it's quite a bit louder than the JBR, sorry, than the Harman Kardon Go Play and of course the JBR Boombox, but a little bit softer than the Iowa Exos 9. I did some separate comparisons for this, a loudness comparison and many quick comparisons uh, for the JBR Boombox to compare it to many others. And again, overall, I cannot recommend it for acoustic music, but I can recommend it for modern music as it has very nice bass, uh, which is very impressive. It's unmatched and unrivaled in its class. Uh, maybe there's the diamond box, but it uh, sounds more neutral um, and maybe not as uh, punchy or something. There's the mini rigs, which maybe sound better on normal volumes, but on high volumes, again, the JBL just uh, has more bass power. Um, although maybe for personal use, I would prefer the mini over the JBL, but I'm talking about the package here. Again, bass performance is nice for modern music, mid sound average, travel is pushed a bit too harsh uh, or a bit too far, so it sounds a bit too harsh, 
sorry. Um, so if you can live with this, uh, it's probably a very nice sounding speaker for you as long as you don't play acoustic music on it. For acoustic music it definitely sounds too hollow, uh, too unnatural, too unlinear. But for modern music uh, and for I don't know, uh, EDM, house music, all of the stuff most people listen to, it's definitely a really really nice speaker. And of course there are the features, for example waterproofing, two charge out ports, the almost best battery life in its class, um, the rugged build, so all of this uh, complements or in complements if you can say it like this, uh, the good sound signature for modern music. Um, so those things together really make it a nice package. Maybe if it was 400 or 450 dollars max, it would have been even more recommendable. For 500 dollars it's a little bit too pricey yet, um, but if you have the money for it and you mostly listen to modern music and not to acoustic music and you are not a hi-fi lover, uh, who needs a super accurate sounding system, the JBL Boombox definitely is worth taking a look at because many people say, yeah, the iWax 9 is so much better. Yeah, it's much bigger, it's not fully waterproof, the battery life is worse, and in my opinion, the JBL also sounds quite a bit better on normal volumes. The JBL will only lose at high volumes as it's a little bit softer than the iWa. So for me, the JBL Boombox is the winner in this class as it just offers the best package. Still, if you are looking for a hi-fi speaker in this class, I can also recommend the FIFA Oslo, which sounds way more hi-fi than the JBL Boombox, and both are also not quite comparable, as they have a totally different approach of a speaker. Also, um, maybe, I don't know, there are not that many more speakers. For example, yeah, the Diamond Box uh, Model M, I think, also sounds really nice in this class, but also rather natural but it's also a little bit louder than the JBL. And for all of you who are, I don't know, uh, not spending this much money on a speaker, but who also want the same sound almost as the JBL, the Hammond Carton Go Play definitely still is a great choice. Although it was released in 2016, it sounds just as good as the JBL on normal volumes, just is a little bit softer on high volumes and uh, cannot quite keep the bass. Um, then there's also the iWaxus 9, which is a great package for the money. It goes for $300 and is louder than the JBL, but rather some kind of party speaker as it sounds uh, not as good as the JBL on normal volumes. So those are some alternatives, but for me, when it comes to entire package uh, and to the features combined with the sound, the JBL Boombox for me is the winner in this class. And now, as one of the last speaker categories, we have the very big speakers. I'm not talking about something like the Soundbox XL here, or no the Soundbox 2, sorry it wasn't the Soundbox XR, that's the DOS you can see here, um, but the really big one from Clavinet Junk, you already know it, or the Teufel Rockstar, um, or the Diamond Box XR, all of those are huge portable speakers, which probably sound really really loud and really good for festivals or something. Sadly, I don't own any of them, I don't have enough space, I couldn't even try them out here, as I'm living in a flat in a big city. Uh, so that's definitely something Clavinet Junkie should do as he lives in a village and he can go out and test those out. So he definitely does a great job with those. Um, I'm rather talking about the, I don't know, very best of the portable speakers, uh, which in my opinion is the DVLA Silver Phantom, not Silver Phantom, the DVLA Phantom overall. I have the gold one here, which is the very best one. It has 4,500 watts. The other models have slightly less. But one thing uh, is same with all of them, they just sound great. There are only some uh, alternatives to it, maybe the Klipsch Stadium, the FIFA Stockholm and maybe the JBL Authentics L16. But friends of mine have tried all of those out and they all said that, it, uh, that they don't quite come close to the Phantom. The Phantom definitely is a stereo setup, just packaged in one little thing, in one little speaker unit and it's just great sounding. It blows away any of those normal speakers you can see here. But of course, this also has a bad side to it, as it's very pricey at about $3,000. The smaller models start at about $2,000, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. I mean, it looks like a portable Bluetooth speaker. That's why some people might be shocked at its price point. But when you hear it and when you compare it to a real stereo system at the same price point, the DVLA Phantom can totally keep up and that's why in my opinion it's totally worth it. I'm even selling my own stereo system which goes for about the same amount of money as the Phantom as the Phantom just performs better. So it really takes a good stereo setup in order to beat the Phantom. That's why I think it's worth the money and that's why I think it's definitely the winner in this class as it's just exceptional. There's nothing like it. Uh, again, maybe the Klipsch Stadium or the FIFA Stockholm, but they won't quite have the same power, especially in high volumes as the Phantom. Again, maybe soon, I will also check out some of the very big speakers like the Diamond Box XR or the Teufel Rockstar, which definitely do not have the same approach as the Phantom. The Phantom is meant to be a small, very compact hi-fi speaker, 
uh, which uh, should deliver the best sound quality possible at any volume range, while the others are rather meant to be taken out, rather meant to, I don't know, uh, make sound or make volume and make power for a party or something, which you are having outside, maybe a pool party or something. Uh, so that's definitely their approach and I might check out the Diamond Box XR soon. If I get lucky or something, I might also check out the Klipsch Stadium as it's a really interesting speaker. So you can definitely uh, stay tuned and be excited for 2018. But so far for me, the Devali Phantom definitely is the king uh, as it's just the best sounding uh, all-in-one speaker I have heard so far. So yeah, this is already it. The guests are waiting and I wish all of you a happy new year. Again, stay tuned, stay excited for all of the speakers who are coming up or which are coming up on this channel here. Hopefully my English will improve as well, um, quite a bit. Uh, I think I watched one of my first videos where I was talking, it sounded completely horrible. Now I got quite a bit better, although again, there is a lot of, uh, I don't know, air to improve, especially in, I don't know, grammatics and also, of course, accent. My German accent sounds quite weird to some of you, especially other German people keep complaining. I think not a single American guy has complained about my German accent so far. It's just the Germans who complain because they think they can speak English so much better than their German friend. But of course, this is just the best I can deliver. I know I have a very strong accent, but sadly I, can do, I can't do anything against it. So you will have to enjoy the videos like this. Of course, I'm just joking, but again, I'm just trying to improve and I'm really wondering why only Germans keep criticizing my English uh, and no, I don't know, native speakers, which is actually quite weird. So yeah, again, stay excited for all of the speakers uh, which are coming up. A uh, lot of new stuff, uh, again, FIFA Stockholm, uh, Klipsch Stadium, maybe something new by JBL, JBL Extreme 2, JBL Charge 4, something. So it's going to be a very exciting year. Again, I wish all of you a great start into 2018. Uh, I hope you are having a great time with your family on New Year's. Um, and yeah, that's already it. If I could help you with your decision on which new speaker you should buy, um, please leave a like on this video or subscribe to the channel. Until then, have a great time and bye bye.